And I am back with Speaker Emerita Nancy Pelosi. Um, the current Speaker, uh, Kevin McCarthy, has not acknowledged the shooting that took place in Tennessee, has avoided um, questions about it. Give him a grade on how he's doing in, in his job as somebody who did it very well. Well, let's hope that for something better to happen, because how can you ignore that? But when you see who his, cons his constituents are within the Republican Party, the representative from that district is the same person who sent out a Christmas card with his wife and children holding rifles. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Yeah. And so that's... They're his bosses. <laughs> and so you can only expect him to do what his speakership allows. He has an ever-shrinking speakership because of how he made these promises. Yeah. And this is who is... Who, they, who were the people who were elected. I want to show you this picture. This is actually a good one. This is um, you uh, at the unveiling of your portrait. It is unique in the Congress because you are the only woman uh, who has mm -hmm. been Speaker of the House. There you are. There is your portrait. Your, your lovely husband, Paul. And how is he doing? You're nice to ask. Thank you for asking. Everybody ask. He's doing well. He has yeah. a couple more months to really be back to normal. Yeah. But it's so sad because he's as apolitical as they come. Sure. He's not political at all. And everybody loves Paul. They're after me, and he gets hurt. But it is... So that is an issue. The, the political violence that we've seen and the extremism that we've seen overtake the Republican Party is something that's unavoidable. We end up talking about it on this show all the time. But there's also a, a sort of religious extremism that's taken place in the courts. You are the first Speaker um, of the House, and you now live in a, in a country that has taken women's abortion rights back to 1972. How do you reconcile the, the sort of advancements that you represent and this retrograde movement in our country? Well, it's, it's big. It's very big, because in the history of our country, our founders, with their beautiful vision of equality of people, that was not reflected in their documents, but thank heavens, they made them amendable to sure. our Constitution. So for the history of our country, we have always been expanding freedom, the abolition of slavery, right to vote for men, then for women, and then, um, uh, again, so many other things, uh, marriage equality and the rest of that, until Dobbs. Yeah. Dobbs said, we're reversing that. We're taking away freedoms that are guaranteed in the Constitution that have precedent established by this court. So this is a dangerous path that this court is on. Yeah. And it's horrible because it's, it's a personal issue. It's an issue of faith. It's a kitchen table issue. It affects people in so many ways. I say that as a mother of five. Paul and I have five children in six years and one week. Uh, and then that's, I don't, and we respect that other people make their own choices about what they do. And we have no politician, no Supreme Court justice, anybody has the right to tell women and families yeah. how they should live their lives. Yeah. This is a horrible decision. And if you, you know what? It really uh, revealed itself in the election. They were going to win 40 seats. It was going to be a red tornado or whatever it was. <laughs> And what did they get? Five seats. And we yeah. will, hopefully will win that dogs. back with our new, fresh leadership in the yeah. Congress, Hakeem Jeffries. You, you've all, always said one of my favorite sayings uh, that you say is you have to learn how to take a punch and you have to learn how to throw a punch for the children. That's right. Give some in the arena. In the arena. In the arena. <laughs> it, talk, give some advice um, to those who are frustrated by our politics now um, about how you can start to get people to vote not on how politics will impact your religion, but how it will impact your life. That's right. Because you're a religious person. It reminds me of that. Uh, we were talking, I was at Georgetown uh, speaking the other day, and we talked about this, and I didn't say it then, but I say it now because you're, the way you framed your question. When President Kennedy was running for president, he went to Houston. He spoke to all these ministers there. And the, the question is, what is what religion do you believe in? Of course, as sure. a Catholic, that was not going to be popular. And he said, it's not important what religion I believe in. What's important is what America I believe in. And that's what we have to be thinking in terms of, taking it uh, to people. And I, I have hope for this reason. I do think that many of the people who fell for uh, what's-his-name's line, because they just didn't see a path in the future in the economy the way it was. I think many of them are really patriotic. 
I think some of them are racist and bigots, but I think many of them are very patriotic. I think young people have lost patience with all this, whether they're talking about gun violence or we're talking about the role of money in politics. Sure. The role of money. If you take that role of that money out, think of what it would mean. The fossil fuel industry could not dominate. The gun industry could not dominate. The pharmaceutical industry could not dominate. And people could see a connection between their kitchen table needs and what is happening yeah. in Washington or in, in politics. And we're very proud of the record we had in the past two years, record-breaking under President Biden. He's just a remarkable president, a great leader, visionary, strategic, knowledgeable, heart-to-heart, -heart, empathetic president. And again, I couldn't say more about my members. They were so, so courageous to vote the way they did. But we still have to remember that the people are the boss, and they have to know. Yeah. And we have to tell over and over again and listen all the time. Yeah. All the time. Uh, Speaker Emerita, uh, Nancy Wilson, happy Women's History Month. Yes. You are a exciting. part of our Women's History <laughs> Month, uh, oh, okay. and you will go down in history. I will argue as, if not the greatest speaker of the House, you're definitely in the top <laughs> Two. <laughs> well, when women succeed, America succeeds. succeeds. Happy Women's History I'm Month. I'm going to give you number one. Speaker Emerita Nancy Pelosi, thank you. Thank you. It's such an honor. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank I'll be right you. back.